Everybody having a good time? Yeah. What a beautiful day at the fair. It's not hot. It's wonderful. Welcome home. Glad to see you're all here. How many people here, sorry to bring it up, get stressed in their day-to-day -day lives? And how many people turn to plants to relax? We do! And how many people are aware that stress is one of the biggest killers that causes all other disease? Uh, my name is Rick. I'm part of the Community Village. We have a booth, Lifelong Learning. Uh, this is Mountain Girl, Carolyn Garcia. Yep. I'm Mountain Girl, and I like to talk about cannabis and community just as much as Rick does. You know, my philosophy is that you turn off the TV. They're not going to tell you anything that's really important. We all know there's a lot of bad stuff going on. And the main thing we could do about it, as I understand, is learn how to take care of ourselves and work together. Uh, one thing I've learned, plants help you do that. For me, the journey with, with cannabis has been a very long one. I wrote a book about it and I started writing it in 1973 and got it published in 76 or something. And the whole point of my book was to make it an organic process. It means something to use life, meaning living living materials and soil and you know composting plants. These are all living things. By using that to to enhance our life rather than wiping out life to make a clear space for us to live in. Because that's been the tendency is to cover everything that, that is a little bit bumpy with concrete. And I'm sick of concrete. Concrete sucks. <laughs> We've got to do better, you know? Another focus of this conversation is about sacred plant medicine and that's because yep. plants have been sacred to people on the earth for tens of thousands of years. If you spend time in the garden and you're quiet and you're fussing about and putting a little compost here and there and you're watering all of a sudden they start talking to you I, I swear they talk to you talk to me anyway and I bet they talk to some of you out there the message is that I am useful I am a useful thing you must find all the different ways to use to use me because without you the gardener to create the good soil and the wa and bring me water, I can't grow well here because it's too dry in summer. So it's a it's a reciprocal relationship, and as the, as the plants themselves begin to reveal what they're capable of, and we don't we're not right really sure because different strains have different stuff in them, and you know hosts of different types of cannabinoids exist out there, and terpenes. The lecture I went to at, at River Remedy said there was 42 kinds of terpenes. And I'm going, 42? I thought there was about 10. It's a whole un, untapped resource. We, we're just getting started with that one. We know about hemp fiber, which used to be in the money because it, the Constitution was printed on hemp paper. You know, these are, these are facts. We don't really have to cut down the forest to make paper. Prohibition took cannabis out of the developmental, developing world of agriculture for so long, almost missed the boat. And if it wasn't for the people in, at this fair and the folks in Oregon doing wonderful things and the good farmers of California, we would not be where we are today. But there's a, just a tremendous path ahead with this plant. I'm fascinated by all the things we might be able to do here. How do we keep connecting? And that's what, you know, basically, we don't really have a telegraph system just for us. But again, we, we, we need to stay in contact with the folks who know. And I'm interested in what you have to say. I'm here to learn. I really yeah. am. Yes, and I can say yes to that. And I can say share your cleverness. Because we all need to know what you found out and what you know that can help all of us become better at what we're doing. So thank you very much for your attention and have a wonderful fair evening because it's going to be beautiful. And you are all so amazing.